When a Nazi captain falls in love with a Jewish woman, he must choose between duty and desire. But his lover has more secrets than he knows. She has a plan that could single-handedly cripple the Nazi party, and he may not have much time to stop it. Meanwhile, an exiled ruler is forced to reconsider his own values in the face of the young couple's love. In 1940, the body of a young Polish girl haunts the dreams of Nazi Captain Stefan. He's soon called to Berlin for an assignment guarding Kaiser Wilhelm II, who is no longer emperor, yet still an important symbol to Germany. Stefan and his men travel to Holland, where Wilhelm's house staff excitedly await their arrival. A young housemaid, Mieke, allows Stefan into the estate. He meets with Wilhelm's advisor, Colonel Sigurd, who warns Stefan not to interact with the female staff. Meanwhile, Princess Hermine advises her husband, Wilhelm, that making a good impression on the Nazis might be key to regaining his throne. Stefan later reports to Gestapo Inspector Dietrich, who tells him that the British have a spy in the area. Stefan is to find the spy and keep Wilhelm safe, or else he'll be executed. Meanwhile, an unseen maid hides a gun, suggesting the spy is one of Wilhelm's servants. While Sigurd informs Wilhelm of the ongoing Nazi invasion of Holland, Mieke brings them coffee. Wilhelm, who finds the Nazi invasion senseless, asks what she would do if she were in charge. She says she'd gladly invade Holland because it's a nice place to live. This amuses Wilhelm, who thinks she might be brighter than most of the Nazis' current leaders. His clear distaste for the Nazis could spell trouble for him later on. That night, Mieke visits Stefan's room and tells him that Wilhelm has invited him to dinner the following evening. He stares at her for a moment before telling her to take off her clothes. She does as he says, and he begins having his way with her. But a sudden pain in his torso ends things quickly. Mika looks concerned, but Stefan simply tells her to accept Wilhelm's dinner invitation on his behalf. When Stefan arrives for dinner, Sigurd tells him never to discuss politics or voice his own opinion. This leads to a one-sided dinner conversation until Wilhelm asks Stefan about his personal history. Stefan reveals his father was lost to the First World War before he was born, and his mother passed away in poverty when he was 12. Wilhelm becomes angry, feeling feeling that Stefan is blaming his leadership for his parents' fate. He leaves the table, and Stefan assures Hermine that he meant no offense. When Stefan returns to his room, he's surprised to find Mika already there. She tells him to remove his clothes, and notes a large scar on his abdomen before pushing him onto the bed and making love to him. He later asks her to stay the night, but she leaves without a word. She'll learn soon enough that Stefan doesn't give up so easily. Sigurd tells Vel him that Stefan has informed him of the British agent and requested a room in the house to keep a closer eye on the staff. Wilhelm grants the request and then excuses himself to go feed the ducks. When Mike comes to bring him more bread, he tells her that he likes ducks because they don't ask for much, unlike most people he's worked with. He then has her show Stefan to his new room, when in private, she warns Stefan that they'll both lose their jobs if their affair is discovered. Dietrich soon visits and tells Stefan that they're getting closer to finding the source of British transmissions in the area. Meanwhile, Mika heads to town and informs local pastor Hendricks that the Gestapo know there's a spy, which is revealed to be Mika herself. Hendricks tells her she needs to finish her mission quickly. Nothing is revealed of her mission other than the fact that it involves Wilhelm, but we later see her oiling her gun. During a briefing, Wilhelm tells Stefan that he tried to stop World War I in its early stages, but was ignored by the Austrians. Meanwhile, Gestapo intelligence catches wind of British transmissions. Wilhelm asks Mika how her family is holding up during the war, but she says very little and leaves as soon as Hermine arrives. Hermine doesn't like her and would probably dislike her more if she knew the trouble Mika's family secrets are about to cause. Mika finds Stefan in her room reading her copy of Beyond Good and Evil. When he apologizes for the way he was when they first met, she kisses him and admits that she wanted him. Meanwhile, the Gestapo fail to track the spy transmissions, learning only that they're coming from somewhere in the village. After learning that Stefan got his scars from shrapnel that was never fully removed, she admits that she's Jewish. He doesn't seem bothered by this. They sleep together until dreams of Polish bodies wake him. He takes a pack of cigarettes from her dresser and leaves, warning her not to tell anyone else that she's a Jew. As he goes outside to light his smoke, he notices the smell of gun oil 
was rubbed off on him from Mika's dresser. Dietrich visits and tells Stefan that SS leader Heinrich Himmler will be visiting soon. Dietrich wants the visit kept secret until they search the house, but Stefan learns while informing Wilhelm that Hermine has already made the visit common knowledge. Stefan soon learns from Seeger that the maids aren't responsible for gun cleaning, leaving him to wonder about the smell from Mike's room. Hermine then informs Stefan that she's partly responsible for Himmler's visit, as she's trying to get the Nazis to restore her husband to the throne. But Stefan will soon learn there's a darker motive behind Himmler's arrival. When Dietrich and his men arrive to search the house, Stefan searches Mike's room himself. Aside from the smell on the dresser, he finds nothing. Wilhelm asks Mika about her love life, learning that she's interested in somebody but hardly knows him. After the Gestapo finished their search, she checks her room to find the gun is still there. Stefan soon sees her running from the house. As Dietrich arrives in the village to track the spy transmissions, Mika tells Hendrix about Himmler's visit. She wants to eliminate him as revenge against the Nazis for taking her husband and her father. That isn't her mission, but Hendrix says he'll reach out to England and give her their response the following day. Watching through the window, Stefan hears everything. The Gestapo soon trace Hendrix as he tries to contact England. Hearing them out, he attempts to flee, but is captured easily. When Mike visits Stefan's room, she can sense his tension, but he says nothing of what he knows, and they wind up sleeping together. He then tells her the source of his dreams. While he was on active duty in Poland, he saw horrible things done to women and children. When a little girl passed away before his eyes, he beat the officer responsible and was taken off active duty as punishment. Mika tells Stefan that men like that officer are the rule not the exception. When he disagrees, she starts to leave. But they soon hear footsteps and the door abruptly opens. While Wilhelm talks to Sigurd, a maid interrupts and calls them aside. Hermine has learned of the affair and wants both Stefan and Mika fired. But Wilhelm asks for a moment alone with them, telling the two that he's fathered two illegitimate children and doesn't feel it's his place to judge them. They can keep their jobs and even continue the affair as long as they don't get caught again. As they leave the room, Stefan receives a telephone message. The affair is about to become the least of his concerns. Stefan learns that Dietrich is interrogating Hendrix to find out who he's been working with. Meanwhile, Sigurd warns Hermine that Wilhelm needs to watch his mouth during his dinner with Himmler. The Nazis have executed their own leaders before, and Wilhelm might be no exception. Mika loads her gun and soon joins the rest of the household outside for Himmler's arrival. After being greeted by Wilhelm and Hermine, Himmler tells Sigurd that he needs to have a private meeting with Wilhelm to discuss important matters. Stefan tells Mika about Hendrik's interrogation, revealing that he saw her with him in the village. He tells her she needs to escape, but she won't abandon her duty any more than he would abandon and his. She cries as they embrace, both uncertain what to do next. As Mika and the other servants prepare for dinner, Hermine finds Wilhelm outside. He tells her that Himmler's invited him to Berlin to take back his throne, but will Mika's still unexplained mission stand in his way? As Stefan learns from Dietrich that Hendrix hasn't talked yet, Himmler joins them and tells them that Wilhelm's restoration is merely a trap to flush out Germans who still support the monarchy. At dinner, a Nazi officer criticizes Wilhelm for not doing anything about the Jews while he was in power. Himmler defends him, saying that nobody understood the Jewish threat until the 1920s. Now, with Germany seeking expansion, they need to focus on cripples and the elderly as well for the sake of clear room for an increasing population. He says they found humane ways of controlling the population, but that those methods won't work on the scale Germany requires. Wilhelm is disturbed by the implications of his statement, yet says nothing. After Himmler and Dietrich leave, Hermine tells Wilhelm that he handled the dinner well, but he quietly leaves her lost in thought. Meanwhile, Stefan asks Sigurd if a man can be loyal to something greater to his country. When Sigurd responds, that a man must first consider if his country even still exists, Stefan tells him about the trap Himmler's setting for Wilhelm. 
In the woods, Mika confronts Wilhelm and says she has a message from Winston Churchill. He seems completely unsurprised to find that she's the spy. When Stefan soon hears Mika calling for help, he meets her outside. She says that Wilhelm has collapsed. As Hermine runs to help her husband, Stefan learns that the Gestapo has broken Hendrix and learned about Mika. She starts to flee, pulling her gun on Stefan when he tries to stop her. But he asks for her trust. He has a plan to help her, one that will require him to betray his country. Wilhelm tells Hermine that he's fine and reveals that Churchill has offered him safe harbor in England, with the promise he can return to the throne following Hitler's defeat. But he's decided he no longer wants to rule at all and wants to remain in Holland with his wife. Stefan picks up Wilhelm in a van telling Sigurd and Hermine he plans to take Wilhelm to the hospital. He then meets Mika in the woods and lets her into the back with Wilhelm. Dietrich arrives at the front gate to search for Mika, and Stefan asks Mika for her gun. When Dietrich refuses to let him leave and has an officer search the van, Stefan shoots both of them. As he drives off, Wilhelm tells Mika that he's glad they got the chance to say goodbye to each other. He soon loses consciousness. Stefan stops to check on him, but finds he's just asleep. Mika exits the van and asks if Stefan will leave with her, but betraying his country doesn't mean he's willing to abandon it. They kiss goodbye, and he asks as she runs off if she'll marry him. She tells him to find her after the war. Stefan ditches her gun in the water and thanks Wilhelm for not turning her in. Several months later, Stefan receives a package in Berlin. It contains a copy of Beyond Good and Evil with a return address in London. He smiles, ignoring his evacuated colleagues as an air raid siren blares outside. He then calls to have Sigurd inform Wilhelm that Mika is safe. Meanwhile, Mika prepares for a meeting with Churchill, happily rubbing her pregnant belly, while Stefan reads her book, unafraid of the bombers roaring overhead. Click the videos on screen right now.